From CBS News Bay Area, this is the Morning Edition. And good morning to all of you. It is Monday, September 4th. Happy Labor Day. Let's go. Bicycle can't move anymore. It's a muddy mess. Thousands of people still trapped in the Nevada desert after storms hit the side of the Burning Man Festival. We're surviving. We're not thriving. <laughs> Checking in with San Francisco businesses after three and a half years from the start of the pandemic, the uphill climb for some to stay alive. I think that if people give us a chance during transit month, they'll find that things have changed. Transit month is officially underway and Bart is hoping you will give them a shot. It's the end of the world. And do you remember this film classic? We are marking 60 years since Alfred Hitchcock's The Birds Hit Theaters. Well, it's the start of our six o'clock hour. I'm Gianna <laughs> Franco. Thanks for hanging out with us. And I'm Nicole Zalumis. There is one bird I like on the show. It's the one that flies into our beauty shot that we cue. Yes, we have a nice bird that flies in on cue. And Jess, you know the bird. It's named Jonathan Livingston Siegel, right? Is that the name of it? I was always trying to figure DLS, it out. Yeah. <laughs> OK, good to know. Well, hey, jo what was it, Jonathan? Jonathan Livingston Siegel. Livingston Siegel. They ought to do a book Siegel about him someday. We're going to see a beautiful sunrise as we head into the next couple hours. Hours, actually, yes. we're starting off nice and mild all throughout the Santa Clara Valley this morning. You're starting to see just that orange sky or orange sky just a little bit above that marine layer this morning. Later into this afternoon, we're currently sitting in the 60s. We're going to be warming up into the 70s for San Jose, where we're highlighting stories all throughout the San Jose area all week long. Now, to add to that, let's take a look at the Bay Area widespread because not all of us are seeing those sunny skies into this afternoon. For some of us along the coast and even in parts of San Francisco, we're going to be dealing with some cloudy afternoons ahead of us. Today along the coast, we're sitting in the low 60s, sunnier skies off into the bay in areas like Oakland, even up into Sausalito with upper 60s today, low 80s in our inland areas to keep it nice and mild to kick off this week. Speaking of that marine layer, though, we are seeing those clouds still stretch their fingers all the way down into the Santa Clara Valley this morning. As we head into this afternoon, just like clockwork, we're going to be seeing sunnier skies off into the the East Bay and all the way up into wine country with cloudy conditions along the coast near Pacifica, even down into Half Moon Bay. We're off to a mild start this morning. Later into this afternoon, we're going to be warming up nicely in pockets like Oakland with upper 60s in sight there. We're going to have more on your forecast coming up in a bit. But for now, over to you, G. All right, Jessica, thank you. Well, if you are planning on taking I-80 home this Labor Day, prepare for heavy traffic. Near Vallejo, a six-mile stretch of westbound 80 is still under construction. It's been like this all weekend. This is between the 780 interchange in Vallejo and Highway 4 in Hercules, which also includes the Carquinas Bridge. Caltrans is reporting progress on the project and says it expects to reopen the lanes by 5 a.m. tomorrow. We've got a three mile long stretch that we're pouring concrete into. We have no spaces, no joints. One three mile long smooth trip. It's better for motorists, but it's also better for the uh, for the pavement because it doesn't get that that pounding that causes vibration that damages it. So we should be able to get 40 years of life out of this work that we're doing this weekend. And by the way, it's only affecting westbound lanes. All eastbound lanes remain open during construction. So how are you going to get around this mess? Well, all weekend, uh, the alternates have been 780, 680, and Highway 4. And right now, a lot of people are off work and school. So we're not seeing as much traffic as we did say on Friday. It got quite busy on those alternates. But later today, as people come home from the long holiday weekend, you're going to see some busy conditions on 780. You can take that to 680, whip around to Highway 4 to get back onto 80, or you can even take 680 all the way through Walnut Creek, 24 over towards that 580 connector, and that'll get you over towards the Bay Bridge. So you've got some options in the meantime. Expect some busier conditions later on because a lot of people will be hitting the roadways on their way home. And if you are getting out and about in this area just to kind of enjoy the day, maybe try to plan your travels around this closure and when it's going to be less busy. Well, let's get a live look across the Bay Area's major airports this morning. The TSA expects to screen more than 14 million passengers around this Labor Day, bookending the busiest summer travel travel period the agency has ever recorded. More than 227 million passengers have been screened since Memorial Day. AAA says more Americans are heading abroad for the holiday with international bookings up about 44% overseas hotel and cruise bookings 
are also up. Well, San Francisco businesses, they hope to see an uptick in foot traffic this Labor Day weekend, but that does not, to see, that does not seem to have been the case. Publicity about San Francisco's crime and homelessness apparently have combined to bring about a very quiet holiday weekend and business activity is still not back to pre-pandemic levels. We're surviving. We're not thriving. <laughs> yeah, I wish the city does something better with the homeless. We're hoping uh, that uh, tourism does bounce back and it's even better than 2019. <laughs> But despite the economic challenges, closer to downtown, Pier 39 is seeing some big crowds over the weekend. A spokeswoman tells us sales are about the same this summer in comparison to 2019. So a little bit better in that area, Reed. Well, good morning to our viewers in the city of San Francisco, where you are waking up to news that a CHP officer got banged up in a crash. That happened at the intersection of Harrison and 3rd Streets. In fact, this is video posted to X, formerly known as Twitter, by Frisco Live 415. It shows a CHP motorcycle down on the ground and several police cars responding yesterday afternoon. No word on why the crash happened, but we are glad to report that trooper will recover. New information this morning for Bay Area families affected by this. A deadly 2019 boat fire off the coast of Santa Barbara. 34 people died. A report in the Los Angeles Times this morning says flames sparked in a trash can and that is what caused the ship to burn. For that, the captain faces 34 counts of manslaughter and will face a judge next month. And your community station looking live at the headquarters for driverless cars cruise. A lot of you expected to protest this morning, those driverless taxis. Some of you say you want the service shut down altogether. The complaint, autonomous vehicles are jeopardizing public safety. And by the way, they may not be wrong about that. You remember this, last month firefighters reported two stalled cruise cars blocking the path of an ambulance. And there's the video to prove it. What's worse, reports say the injured person inside the ambulance died. Today's protest starts at 10 a.m. at 10th and Bryant Streets. Let us know what you think. Sound off on social about the fate of driverless cars. Be sure to use the hashtag KPIX. Let's cross the bridge live in Oakland this morning where your community will see union health care workers hit the pavement in a rally demanding better work conditions. Congresswoman Barbara Lee is expected to make an appearance there. The rally starts at 9.30 a.m. at Mosswood Park. Nicole? Reed, check out this mess. The Burning Man Festival is more of a mud bath, thanks to Mother Nature. Torrential rain delayed festivities, including the big grand finale, the burning of the statue. It remains intact, and a social media account connected to the event said the burn is happening tonight. The weather closed roads going in and out of the Black Rock Desert site. It's trapped more than 70,000 people. They're stuck in mud over a foot deep. There are no working toilets. Porta potties are overflowing. All this as they shelter in place in the remote Nevada desert. Now, despite the rough conditions and limited supplies, attendees, for the most part, appear to be keeping their spirits up, all working together. Our Betty Yu caught up with a few festival goers for a firsthand look at conditions on Sunday. Wow, this is really deep and gross. Oh. Somehow, I need to take these off before going into that bus. Milbray resident and venture capitalist Chris oh Dien shared video of how he slogged through the mud around his camp called Titanic's End. Supplies like plastic bags and socks are in high demand. More rain fell on Sunday, though the bulk of it has passed. All right, I'm back on the bus. I'm not really sure how these others did. Oh, the bathroom situation isn't pretty. It's like overflowing mud. Try to get back to my bed. Oh my gosh. Still, Chris says he knows he's one of the lucky ones. We have great infrastructure. There is. We have shelter, we have heat, we have electricity, we have food, we have water but that is not true for many other people. He says he's with a well-resourced camp and he's staying in a bus with about 18 people. Organizers said Sunday evening, the roads in Black Rock City are still too wet and muddy to officially open them for people to get out. But if they can clear the way on Monday, that traffic jam could son. be longer than 12 hours. People are free to walk off the playa if they choose to do so. Celebrity DJ Diplo and comedian Chris Rock made the five mile trek on Saturday. For those who choose to stay longer, the traditional burning of the effigy known as the man has also been rescheduled from Saturday to Labor Day. 
Despite the upheaval and disruption, there were moments of kindness and community. What I have seen personally is resilience. I've seen a huge amount of people coming together. I have seen strangers hugging strangers. I have seen people gifting things to others. Chris said he's planning to make the five hour, 15 mile walk to catch a bus to Reno on Monday. A lot more gross than you could possibly imagine. But Titanic's then 2020, 2023. Oh, the mud. Disaster. Yeah, it is. yeah. Can you, you? I just feel like when they get home, they're going to be like mud all over my shoes. Never again. I don't think they'll do that again next year mm -mm. or anyone. I don't know. Rain can be the weather unpredictable. So why were they still wearing shoes? You go barefoot. You lose the bike. Like you just got to make the track. Five I, hours. I think some of the porta potties were overflowing, oh. so that might motivate the shoes.